I don't mention this in the rest of the video, so listen up. Steam Desktop is pretty cool, but right now, if you choose to update SteamOS and the desktop, you're gonna get thrown into a boot loop and your Steam Deck is not gonna work right. So please don't do that. Right after the intro, I'll show you how to do it in your super nice handheld gaming mode. Do, do that one. Okay, thanks, bye. There is a new Steam Deck client and OS update, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to download it. We're just gonna go over to system. We're going to check for software updates, and there we go, Steam Deck client and OS update. You just go ahead and hit apply, and it'll start downloading it. Now, this is going to add a lot of small tweaks and a few big tweaks. I'm going to go over some of the big new features, if you would call that. They're, they're not anything too extravagant, but I think that they are important nonetheless. And I think it really shows kind of how this device works and what you can expect from this device if you are new to the Steam Deck, which most people are considering it's only been around like a month or two. But anyway, let's just go ahead and skip forward. This took me anywhere between five to 10 minutes for the entire process that I'm showing here. I've kind of cut it all up. I do wish that the UI while you're updating was just a tiny bit better kind of gave you more information about exactly what is going on. There are definitely times where I was doing this where I was like, oh, I'm just sitting at a black screen. Is it off? Do I have to turn it back on? But I just left it alone. And again, five or 10 minutes and it was totally fine when we were back up. Now, once we were back up, the first thing I immediately noticed is I only have four games installed. Why do I only have four games installed? And I was moving around of like, maybe I accidentally hit some filters. No, what happened was whenever you update, they destroy your card as payment for no, it's um, I don't know what happened with it. It just didn't recognize it for some reason. I just popped it out and I popped it right back in and everything worked just as it did before the update. So that is very nice. Um, my card is very full. I definitely need to delete some games or buy a bigger card. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure that out later. Let's figure out the next thing to show. The next thing I'm gonna show is going to the security tab. We can now do a lock screen, which kind of, you know, makes this more into an actual computer. You can do it whenever it boots up. You can do it before going to the login, or you can do it while swapping to desktop mode. If you like wanna give this to some kids to play on, but then whenever, you know, hey, I don't want you to actually mess with it like a computer. You can have a lock on there and you could just set the pin to whatever you want. I actually really like the button prompts for this. Like it's very intuitive to kind of just move the little arrows to set a pin. And I'm just doing for show, I am doing it on the desktop mode. And here we are. You can see into the current pin, it shows my Steam profile picture, which is nice. And you just hit it and swap over to desktop mode and it's pretty straightforward. You can also use the touch screen, which I didn't show off. Another thing they added was some accessibility. If we go to keyboard, you can see I have the standard QWERTY keyboard selected, but they have added a whopping 21 languages and layouts. Of course, this does not cover a large majority of the world. You know, there's hundreds of languages, I think thousands actually, but this is pretty good. A lot of people that have their hands on the deck are gonna be able to use one of these languages and be having a pretty all right time. I'm definitely glad that they went ahead and added that. Now I have been playing some different games on the Steam Deck, testing them out. One of those is Borderlands, the pre-sequel. And I kind of want to get a grasp on my achievements, you know, see exactly what I should be going for. So if we navigate through over to here, you can see they have redone the way that the achievement page looks. And you can go through your own achievements and global achievements, and you can even sit here and go to compare and look at your friends and see what kind of achievements they have going on. I'm not going to show that because I don't really think I need to show you who's on my friends list, but I did show you some of my achievements. So there you go. There's a little bit of personal info for you to latch onto if that makes you happy. You know what would make me happy if we talked about some actual game tweaks. So let's jump into some games. This footage you see here is being captured on the deck. It is running at 1280 by 720 into my capture card. That will look much better on the deck screen than your monitor unless you're used to 720p. You have been warned. 
Please do not tell me, ooh, why the footage look ooky. That's why. That's why it look ooky, okay? But anyway, let's go ahead and get into this new feature that they have done. The half rate shading. This applies variable rate shading to save power. So right now we're a little more than three hours. I'll actually, I'll run around and I'll play a tiny bit. Um, I am kind of playing in a weird setup. So my... Um, the, the manner in which I run around and play is not going to be incredibly responsive because of the setup I'm doing. So uh, just just know that that is not necessarily the Steve Deck's fault and it's not necessarily my fault. So our battery's a little more than three hours. If we go to half rate shading and I turn this on, you can see immediately there is no change whatsoever and the battery life doesn't change. If we go ahead and run around a little bit though, that's sometimes whenever you can find out if it's going to actually update or not. And the battery life has actually, um, you know, continued to go down. So I would say in Spyro, there is, um, you know, probably no point in turning that on. But there are some games in which you can see a noticeable difference and the very least in image quality. And I will go ahead and show you one of those now. Okay, so in Crisis 1, you can see right now we're getting a little more than three hours. I'll go ahead and I'll go down and I'll mess with people just so we can see like if that's actually what we're gonna get or if, you know, if it'll go ahead and drop down to about three hours. Okay, so as long as it keeps steadily dropping and we'll you know, reach a point in which it doesn't keep dropping fast, then we'll be able to actually learn something. It looks like about now. This is fine. You know, ideally I wouldn't get caught. We'll just go ahead and, and get finished off here. All right, so here we are. It's a little bit off of two. Bro, why did it load me into that? Okay, so I think we're at a good spot now. The battery unfortunately has gone ahead and went back up to three hours because we haven't been doing anything in a while. But at the very least, you will be able to tell whenever we turn this on. There's a big difference in crisis. Yeah, everything looks very aliased. All the edges look dramatically different. To be fair, a lot of it is in the background whenever we turn this on. But it's definitely jarring in this game. The way that fine detail is with the foliage is just, it's pretty bad. I mean, I could understand maybe that rock in the background if we... Uh, you know had to play with that being like that but uh, the biggest thing i think in this game in particular is it doesn't even really seem like it helps with performance very much either like it really isn't some monumentous thing this is definitely a very you need to experiment with this is not a set and forget kind of thing like i'll run around here real quick it's like actually kind of hard to see for one because of this low resolution <laughs> that we're playing in um, I guess the battery life is actually doing better, but at, at what cost? I would say at too much of a cost. It's like actually kind of hard to play. So probably would not be recommending turning this on. Um, at the very least in Crisis. In Spyro, I mean, we didn't see a noticeable difference, but I think that's because it uh, maybe just didn't work. And now you can see what the game's kind of supposed to look like. Man, 1080 or 720p never looked so good, huh? <laughs> like after that, it's just like, oh yeah, huh? 720p is not that bad. And you can see we maybe got about 30 minutes of extra battery life playing like that. That is absolutely not how I would play the game. I'm sure this feature, it is experimental. I'm sure it'll get better and I'm sure we will find many more uses for it. But in these two use case scenarios that I've looked at, they did not do much for me. Maybe they will do better for you. Let me know. Let me know what you find. And if you actually find some good, useful, like, applications for it right off the bat. I am going to go ahead and head out. If there were any updates on here that I missed out on that you wanted to see more of, there were other updates on here. It's just... An they seemed pretty minor to me relative to the ones that I covered. This wasn't a massive update by any means. So please let me know 
the ones that you want me to cover, or just maybe if you have some issues on the Steam Deck, if there are some things that you want them to go ahead and make an update for that they haven't yet, let me know. I would love to look into some stuff. Uh, and with that, I would uh, love to quit playing Crisis because I am not doing very good. Yeah, no, we're um, we're done. Goodbye.